Signal gasoline. Let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, murder will shout. I am the Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Murder is born in many places, most of them quite ordinary. Sometimes it's born in a smoke-filled hotel room, sometimes around a nightclub table, but more often it begins in a small secret place because murder is a secret thing at first. Take, for example, a small, unobserved telephone booth in the back of a chain drugstore, the one in which a small-time racketeer, Peanut Marola, is talking. Well, Peanut Marola speaking. Yeah, yeah, I got all the dope. It shouldn't be a tough proposition to swing. The garage is out in the suburbs, in the Oakdale district, where the houses are far apart and everybody minds his own business. Nice place to work. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, this guy who owns the place, George Kramer, is single and lives by himself out in a little house on 71st Street. Yesterday, I counted only three cars that stopped in. That ain't enough to buy him a good breakfast. What? Well, the place is plenty big, but empty. Hey, here's an interesting angle I got on it. Seems that some small fry businessman named Albion, if I got the jerk's name right, has got some kind of a mortgage on the place. It might give us some trouble. Huh? Yeah, I'll get busy on it. And I'll call you when I got something definite. Don't worry. It'll be easy picking. Yes, that's the way murder is born. In an ordinary way. Nothing unusual about it. A small-time racketeer makes a phone call to talk over a business deal. And that's the beginning. Maybe if George Kramer had known, things might have been different. But he didn't. In his little garage in the Oakdale section, he was sound asleep, slumped in his office chair. Kramer! Uh, Kramer, wake up! Uh, What's that? Oh, oh, Mr. Albion! You were asleep. Asleep in the middle of the day. How do you expect to make any money like that? Well, Mr. Albion, I was up half the night last night doing a hurry-up ring job on an Oldsmobile. You never saw an Oldsmobile last night. And the last ring job you did was probably six months ago. Probably out carousing around last night. Ah, you know I don't go out nights, Mr. Albion. Well, Well, anyway, you haven't got a single car in your garage to work on, and you fall asleep in the middle of the day because you're tired. (laughs) Why don't you go out and stir up some business? Now, look here, Mr. Albion. You stick to your business and I'll stick to mine. Right now, this things This happens are... to be my business. I'm trying to tell you that things are tough in the garage business these days. Look, you know I'm having a tough time of it. Why do you come in here every day and burn my ear? Can't you leave me alone? I'll leave you alone for the next week. But let me give it to you in black and white. I've loaned you in various amounts a total of $2,000, which is more than I've come to think this place is worth. You agreed to pay it back. With interest. Of course. One week from today, you owe me $2,000. But but I thought you were going to carry it along until I got back on my feet. I've been waiting six months for you to get back on your feet, and you show no signs of ever making it. I'll, I'll, I'll pay the interest. I'll pay it faithfully. Haven't I always paid it? What good is the interest if I lose the principal? Oh, you, you won't lose it. Honest, Mr. Albion, I promise you, you won't lose it. Well, I think I've already lost it. Unless I can do something with this garage myself. Well, I have to be going along now. I have business to do. I'll see you in a week, Kramer. Wait a minute. You... You wouldn't take the garage away from me. 
wouldn't I? Oh, you, you've got a lot of money. You, you don't need it. That's beside the point. A debt is a debt. Yeah, but what, what would you do with the garage if you had it? I'd sell it to someone who could run it profitably. Oh, you wouldn't. I'll be back in a week. Have some money for me. Mr. Albion. Yes? I... I could kill you. With the prologue of tonight's story, Murder Will Shout, the Signal Oil Company brings you another of the strange tales of the Whistler. But first, I know you Whistler fans will be interested to hear of the growing popularity of this program. The Whistler is now tops on the coast. The latest program popularity survey of all radio programs shows no other single Pacific Coast program has more listeners than The Whistler. Yes, people do know a good thing when they see it and when they hear it, too. And that goes for gasoline and auto lubrication, too. For 14 years, so many drivers have been switching to Signal products that today, Signal dealers serve six western states from Canada to Mexico. But what's of most importance to you is the reason for this swing to Signal. What the Signal products and Signal dealers have that accounts for this growing popularity? Well, throughout 14 years, the name Signal has stood for the absolute top quality in gasoline and auto lubricants. Even now, with certain ingredients reserved for war, Signal's famous Go Farther gasoline is still the finest gasoline that can be made today with the emphasis still on mileage. And experienced Signal dealers, being in business for themselves, have a real reason for giving your car more thorough, more conscientious service that will keep you their satisfied customer. There you have it. Two genuine reasons why signal service cars do go farther. Two reasons why when today's cars must last out the duration, your neighborhood signal dealer is a man you should know, too. And now, back to the whistler. Murder gets its start in simple and ordinary ways. For instance, there's murder in the heart of George Kramer. And once the thought occurs, the next step is easy, if the opportunity presents itself. And in this case, it does very soon. And in the person of Peanut Marola. You George Kramer? Yeah, that's right. Something wrong with your car I can fix? Not exactly. Got a couple of minutes? Time is all I've got. Good. Mind if I sit down? Well, what do you want? I want to talk over some business. Oh, well, then sit down. Sit down, by all means. Thanks. Things kind of tough in the garage business these days? Oh, they're not what they used to be. But I managed to get along. But not in the way you used to get along, eh? Uh, not exactly. Look, uh, what are you getting at? Can you use a little ready cash, no references, co-signers, very little collateral? <laughs> Who couldn't on those arrangements? My name is Marola, Peanut Marola. Oh, I'm glad to meet you. Now, where does this ready cash come in? You sound like a smart man, Kramer. Mind if I talk turkey? Oh, go ahead. I can't lose anything listening. Has Mr. Albion been bothering you lately? Uh How'd you know about him? Well, I kind of looked into things and found out that Albion holds some kind of a mortgage on this place. Is that right? That's right. How much? Two thousand dollars. It's a nice little sum. Keeps you awake nights, doesn't it? <laughs> awake at night and asleep in the daytime. Well, if you want to let me, I can fix it so you can sleep at night and spend your days buying expensive clothes. Hmm. What sort of a proposition is it? Ever hear of the black market? You mean where you buy meat without giving any ration points? No, the black market in automobiles. Well, I didn't know there was one. Well, there is, and it's big time, and there's big money in it. Well, where do I fit in? Now, look, pal, you have a nice big garage in a quiet neighborhood where nobody bothers you. We get the cars any way we can, and then we sell them for anything we can get. And it's always a lot. We need some place to keep them until they're sold. You just want to store them here? Sure, it's a cinch. A guy drives into your garage with a car and asks you to fix it up, see? 
When it's ready, the same guy calls for it again. Looks like a legitimate business. Nobody knows that anything out of the ordinary is happening. Well, how much fixing up is there to do? Eh, not much. You change a few numbers, switch a couple of wheels, and maybe splash a little paint on now and then. What about the police? Nothing to worry about, pal. When they get suspicious, we just move to another garage. But while we work here, there's plenty in it for you. How much? A hundred on a car. Good enough? <laughs> Sounds too good to be true. Well, is it a deal? It's a deal if you advance me $2,000 to pay off Albion with. This is strictly a cash and carry business, chum. We don't advance nobody nothing. Well, then it's no go. In a week, Albion will have this garage and you won't be able to use it. Yeah? Getting tough on you, eh? Hmm. Yeah, we wouldn't want our plans upset, now, would we, pal? There's a cheaper way of paying off the debt than by me giving you the money. Yeah? How? Simple. Maybe Mr. Albion just disappears someday. You mean... Yeah, sure. Oh, oh no, no, I, I, I couldn't do that. No? Maybe you won't have to. Maybe we'll do it for you. You'll... You'll do it for me? Sure. In my business, there's nothing to it. And all your problems would be solved. Well, I, I don't know. But, well, if I said okay, what would we do first? Well, the first thing you do is... Just so that we can sort of pass the buck back and forth in a nice way, you understand? In case somebody starts poking his nose into our business, we've got to have at least two partners in this garage. What do you mean? Well, what I mean is this. You've got to make me a 50-50 partner in this business establishment. You mean you want me to sign over half of this garage to you? That's the idea. Oh, now, wait, wait a minute. I'm not getting into anything that's going to end up with me losing this garage. No, sir. All I want to do is make some money and in a hurry... Now, if that's what you're... In... Slow down, Kramer. Don't get all excited. Nobody's trying to cut you out of your garage. In this business, the more partners you have, the better it is. I'm not going to move in permanently. As soon as the racket wears thin, we dissolve the partnership and the garage goes back to you. Oh, oh well, in that case, everything's all right. I'll, I'll make any sort of an arrangement you want. <laughs> I thought you would. Well, I'm going to skip downtown and get in touch with a mouthpiece who will draw up the papers. I'll bring him back this afternoon for you to sign. See you later. Marola. Just a minute. Yeah? Aren't you, uh, forgetting something? Forgetting what? Mr. Albion. <laughs> well, what do you know? I almost forgot about Mr. Albion. Well, don't you worry, pal. We'll take care of him in due time. Uh, look, I, I know you know your business, but I know Mr. Albion. I've uh, been doing some thinking. Uh, I've got an idea. Yeah? Okay, spill it. Well, this guy Albion has a lot of money, but just the same, he's too tight to buy a car of his own, so he always rides the bus everywhere he goes. Now, the end of the Oakdale line doesn't quite reach his house, and he has to walk a half mile along the highway from the end of the line in order to get home. You can't bump a guy in broad daylight on the highway. Oh, you, you don't have to. Every Saturday night, he always stays in town and takes the last bus home at 2 o'clock. At 2 o'clock in the morning, that halfway, half mile of highway he walks is uh, deserted. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Quite a setup. All we do is run over him and make it look like a hit-and-run case. The easiest thing in the world. But an automobile leaves a lot of clues behind. Who's worrying about clues? We just pick some car up off the street, use it, and then abandon it somewhere. Let some other sucker worry about taking the rap. Well, I, I, I don't want to know too much about it. You just go ahead and handle it in your own way. Wait a minute. Today's Saturday. Yeah. Mr. Albion takes the bus tonight. Okay. Don't worry about a thing, pal. I'll take care of all the little business details. It'll be a sin. You heard what the man said, Kramer. He said it's a cinch. He ought to know because he's an old hand at this business of getting inconvenient people conveniently out of the way. It's an art the way Peanut Marola does it. The art of murder. Yes, and since it's going to mean so much to you, you should be here to see it. Those two cars parked at the side of the road, waiting for the bus to stop, drop its lone passenger, turn around and head back for town. And when it does, there's a quick flicker of light, and the first car, driven by a friend of Marola's, starts down the road. His headlights 
pick up Mr. Albion walking along the right side of the pavement. Then, Marola in the second car, the stolen car, starts. Walking along the highway, Albion hears the first one come up and pass him. The noise of the first one hasn't died down before Marola roars in. The rapid succession of sounds confuses Albion just enough. He doesn't step off the road quite fast enough. And except for a slight bump, there's nothing to it. I'm looking for George Kramer. I'm George Kramer. My identification, Lieutenant Clark, headquarters precinct. Oh, yes, Lieutenant. You hear about my car. Yes, yes, the car. That's right. You reported it stolen. Yes. Last night, I left it parked in front of my house like I always do. I don't have a garage on my property yet. And when I came out to drive to work this morning, it was gone. It was a green Chrysler sedan. License uh, 6G4537. Yes, that's right. I just finished putting on that paint job two days ago. Yeah, had it in the shop a week, fixing it up. I reported the theft as soon as I could hitch a ride over here and telephone. Yeah, I uh, came right out when we got the report. Funny, we were just checking up on the ownership of your car when you called. You you mean you found it already? Yeah, yeah, we found it even before you reported it. Uh, do you ever drive out around uh, Miller Highway, Mr. Kramer? Mill... Miller Highway? Why, no, no, I haven't been out that way for months. You uh, weren't driving out there last night around, too. Why, oh, no, no, of course not. I I was in bed, and my my, my car was stolen. Yeah, sure, sure, well. Well, you may be telling me the truth, Mr. Kramer, and maybe you're trying to be pretty smart. I don't know which, but uh, either way, I think you'd better come down to the station with me. Get your hat and lock up the place. Oh, but wait, wait a minute. You mean you're arresting me? Well, let's say we're going to hold you for questioning. But why? For what? For hit and run. Maybe you can explain to the boys down there how your car happened to be found parked 300 yards from where a guy was run over and killed. And the front of it was covered with bloodstains. <laughs> George Kramer. That's what happens sometimes when you think about murder. It doesn't uh, come out just the way you expected it. You don't know what this is all about yet, but you do know that there's only one person who can explain it to you. So when you get to the police station and after they've booked you and taken you to your cell, you ask them to call Peanut Marola, and pretty soon he comes. Five minutes, Marola. Okay, I won't stay long. Hiya, Kramer. Marola, what is this? They've got me in here for manslaughter. My car was the one you used to run down Albion. Shut up, you fool. Well, I want somebody to hear you. Well, before I'll take the blame for this, I'll make sure somebody hears me. I'll tell them you were driving that car, not me. Listen, small fry. What do you want to go flying off the handle for? More than one way to beat the record. But you used my automobile. Why? It was an accident. One of those things that happens once in a century. Doing just like I told you I was going to do. Came out to your end of town and stole the first car I found on that dark street. How was I to know you lived on that street and it was your car I was taking? Good Lord, you expect me to believe that? Look, all you gotta do is tell them that you weren't driving your car last night and get an alibi. Tell them you were someplace else. That's what I told them, told them that I was home. But they don't believe me and I got no proof. Okay, look, tell them you were mistaken about the time. Tell him you spent the night until 2 o'clock at the Lido nightclub down on Foster and Green Streets. You get a dozen people to swear that both of us were there until 2. You tell him I drove you home in my car. Well, is, is that any good? They can't do a thing to you. They got to prove you were driving that car. They won't be able to break an alibi like that. Got it straight now? Yeah, I... I was at the Lido nightclub until 2 with you and some friends... You, you back me up now. Sure, I'll back you up. You got nothing to worry about, pal. That's right, Kramer. You don't have a thing to worry about. That is, unless spending the rest of your life in prison worries you. 
Amateurs like you shouldn't get mixed up in murder, George. But of course, your friend Marola, your good friend Marola, has everything figured out. Marola's an old hand at this business, and he doesn't seem to be excited, so don't you worry about a thing. See, not Marola speaking. Yeah, I'm at the Hall of Justice. We're just up to the jail talking with him. Listen to this. He believes that I took his car by mistake. <laughs> How can you lose when you work with characters like that? Huh? Let him talk all he wants to. What can he do to us? I got an alibi that he couldn't break if he talked a year. Besides, the cops have an open and shut case against him. I'll give him about two days to clear it up. Then we'll have the garage to ourselves and it'll be easy sailing. Huh? Yeah, he signed the papers all right yesterday. Yeah. Everything's great. <laughs> That's not all of tonight's story. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending of tonight's tale. Meantime, a question. Have you forgotten anything lately? Just anything? Well, of course, we all forget occasionally. Then suppose you had 32 different things to remember, like the service station operator who lubricates the average modern car. It'd be mighty easy to forget one of those parts, wouldn't it? And you know what that'd mean. Going without lubrication might wear out some vital part some part you can't replace today. That's why signal gasoline dealers don't trust to memory when they lubricate your car. Instead, they use the famous signal check chart on which the maker of your car lists each part and the exact lubricant it should have. And your dealer isn't satisfied with checking each part against the chart just once. No, sir. He checks each part twice. So not a single part can be overlooked and go without lubricant. And when I say lubricant, I mean the nine specialized lubricants that signal dealers use to assure all parts the long, trouble-free life the maker of your car built into them. It's just another example of signal gasoline dealers' more conscientious service to help your car go farther. Another reason why a good man for you to know today is your neighborhood signal gasoline dealer. And now, back to the whistler. <laughs> Well, George Kramer, now you know what murder is like. How it starts as a fleeting, almost meaningless wish in your mind and builds into a noose around your neck. You're in jail charged with manslaughter. And Marola, the man who actually did the killing, who double-crossed you with a frame-up, is going scot-free. Or is he? Everything's great, he said a minute ago to someone on the telephone. But now, as he hangs up and steps out of the phone booth. Well, what do you know? Peanut Marola. Huh? Oh. oh, nice to see you once in a while when you're not in trouble, if that's possible. Yeah, Lieutenant Clark, you ought to quit the police force and go on the stage. You're so funny. So long. Uh, wait a minute, Marola. Yeah? Aren't you being a little unsociable? Step across the hall here to my office where we can talk. Come on. I got nothing to talk to you about. Sit down. I think you have. For instance, you know a guy named George Kramer? Sure, I know him. He's my partner in the garage business. Oh, that's sort of a new one for you, isn't it, Marola? Maybe, and maybe I like it. Yeah, maybe. You were just in talking to Kramer, weren't you? Sure, naturally. My partner gets in trouble. Naturally, I'm going to see him, see what I can do. You, uh, they get anything to do? Seems like there's not much I can do. He got out of line. You caught him. Looks like an open and shut case. What can I do? Uh, I was wondering if you'd say that. Yeah? What else would I say? Knowing you, nothing. I just wanted to be sure this was the way I figured it. What do you mean, the way you figured it? How else could you figure it? You got the guy red-handed. I think maybe we have. You say you went into partnership with Kramer in his garage? Yeah, sure. He needed some dough, so I bought in. I figured it might be a good investment. Oh, I'm sure you must have. Yeah. 
But didn't you know that Kramer already owed another investor some money? Sure, I heard about it. But that was Kramer's own personal affair. It had nothing to do with our deal. Uh huh. After you talked to Kramer, one of my boys went in to see him. He's changed his story about where he was last night. Says he was with you down at the Lido nightclub until two. Then you drove him home. He says that? He's nuts. You know the Lido's been closed for two weeks. Pulled it up because of the curfew. And I didn't see Kramer last night. I can prove where I was. Sure, sure. I'm certain you can. You always were good at alibis. Hey, listen, Clark. Take it easy. Just a couple of questions more. One, did you ever drive Kramer's car? Why? Suppose I did. Oh, nothing. I just wanted to check. You see, we found some fingerprints on the steering wheel that weren't Kramer's. I just thought they might be yours. Oh, uh, I... Yeah, as a matter of fact, they might be. I, I did drive it once. When? Oh, about a week ago. Think again. Kramer's car was in the shop being fixed up until two days ago. Uh, yeah, I... I guess it must have been later, uh, a couple of days ago. Yeah, it must have been. Lieutenant Clark. Yeah? Okay, thanks. Well, it's nice you told me about driving the car, Marola. That was the file room. Those were your fingerprints. When I heard you talk to Kramer, I had him pull your prints and check. Okay, so they were my prints. I just... But you got nothing on me. I just said... Okay, so I'm getting sick of this. I told you what connection I got with Kramer. It's strictly business. My partner, see? But I got nothing to do with him going out and bumping off a guy he owes money to. So I'm through answering questions, you get me? Now, wait a minute. Just one more. Answer this one, Marola, if you can. How did you know Mr. Albion, the guy Kramer owed money to, was the one that was killed? Uh, uh, I read in the paper. The only paper that carried the story was the Morning Herald. Here, read what it says. The hit and run drive early this morning. Hit and killed him. Go on, read it. Uh, an unidentified man. On... Yes, Marola. Until 20 minutes ago, even I didn't know who he was. So how could you have? Unless you had something to do with it. Listen, Clark. I, I tell you, I didn't. Kramer, Kramer told me who it was. Yes. Well, maybe Kramer will tell us a lot more when he hears how you've been trying to frame him. This is one time, Marola, when you depended too much on an alibi. You forgot too many other things, important things, like the fingerprints on the steering wheel. You forgot to find out that it would have been next to him too impossible for George Kramer to have driven that car last night. You see, he has a very advanced case of night blindness. Rare, but very real. And it prevents him from driving after dark. Now, with his help, our case against you won't be hard to prove. The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The curious story of checkmate for murder. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood signal dealer. This program, directed by George W. Allen, with story by John Hayes, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Bob Anderson speaking and suggesting you let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.